Hello, and welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, we're going to do a request. Had a request to do a disc golf warm up routine, which I'm going to show you today. But first, let's talk about a couple of reasons why warming up is so important. First is the obvious to avoid injury. I know myself, when I get out of the car, sometimes I feel like I'm going to shatter in a million pieces, and sometimes I feel amazing. Just comes with getting older. Doing a proper warm up has more benefits than just injury prevention. Can also prevent us from getting sore the next day as well. Can also increase our performance, especially early on in the round. In order to get these extra benefits, we need to warm up properly. The most beneficial way to warm up is through a dynamic warm up. Static stretching is not the most beneficial way to warm up for your disc golf round. And what I'm talking about is what I see some guys and girls doing when they get on the course, they start doing some static stretching, they reach down and touch their toes, they put their elbow behind their head, or reach down across their chest. Static stretching actually decreases your heart rate and doesn't prime your nervous system for the athletic workout you're about to take on in your disc golf round. Also, static stretching elongates our muscle past the point where it wants to go. And if you can envision us always talking in the disc golf world about the rubber band effect and how we want to take advantage of that to throw the disc farther, uh, just imagine stretching out a rubber band so it doesn't snap as well. That's pretty much what we're doing with our bodies when we're static stretching. Our muscles need tension in order to be athletic, and sometimes when we static stretch, it ruins some of that athleticism. On the other hand, a dynamic workout not only increases your heart rate, but also allows more oxygen to reach your muscles. It also activates and primes the connections between your nerves and muscles, allowing us to move better functionally, which will help our disc golf form. I personally get bored with doing the same warm up over and over again, so I'm going to include some of the different activities that I enjoy doing. Just like any activity, uh, pick the things you like to do. Yes, we need to warm up certain areas like our hips and our shoulders and our T spine, but there's different ways you can do it. So hopefully, I've got a couple of each one in here. Also got some uh, different exercises. If you can't do specific ones, there's kind of like a, uh, a lead up version of those exercises as well. So you can pick and choose what you want to do. So without further ado, let's jump right on in there. All right, we're going to start out with some leg swings. Once again, don't want to do any static stretching. We're just going to get these hips nice and loose. Also work on our balance. And of course, making sure we work on both sides of our bodies, both right and left. You might find out you have better balance on one side of your body than another. Then we're going to move on to some side to side leg swings. Once again, it's a little bit of a challenge for some people balance five to 10 reps. You don't have to swing your arms back and forth. I'm just doing that for a little fun, but I guess you can get a little timing working if you want. If you're having a difficult time balancing, you can hold on to something. Sometimes when I'm not feeling great, I hold the side of the car to do both of these and the next one as well which are hip rotations or hip cars, whatever you'd like to call them. Once again, five to 10 reps, typically I do around 10. I really wanna get this area in my body loose. Most rotational athletes report some sort of lower back soreness after they perform. So we wanna do a good job of reducing that by warming up that area really well. I'm just holding the disc to help with my balance. You can hold the disc or you can not hold the disc. Once again, a lot of these are up to you, what you enjoy, what you like to do. You can kind of adjust it a little bit what you feel most comfortable with. For example, more dynamic would be a hopping hip circle. Next, we have a side lunge or lateral lunge. Once again, five to 10 reps. This is great to help us with our bracing and the pressure we're gonna feel in our body when we're getting down in our good, strong brace. You might not like this activity, but it is pretty important. So here's a little bit of a lead up. I'm just rocking back and forth, getting the pressure into my knees and my hips, just like you're going to feel when you're embracing. If you really don't want to do these, you can try this, just a little shuffle back and forth while opening and closing your arms. I go back and forth for about 10 yards. Typically I do the lateral lunge, but sometimes I'm lazy and I do this. Here's a third activity to warm up your lateral strength, the skater jump, awesome for working on your brace. Anything with repetitions is between five and 10 reps. Yes, you can do all three of these activities. I love to do footwork drills before I play so I feel athletic. Here's a version of karaoke. You can also do tapioca. This is great for your X step and transferring your body weight. We'll go in distance here once again, 10 yards back and forth. Now we're gonna to transition to the upper part of our body doing some shoulder halos. Try to keep my arms at about a 90 degree angle, working my way around my head, making sure I'm getting a great stretch in my shoulders and in my T-spine, five to 10 reps, both ways as we work through this drill. Next, we're gonna work a T-spine stretch. I'm bent down in an athletic position, back straight. I'm working my arms up and around so they pretty much make a straight line. 
working that T-spine nice and good. Obviously, we're gonna work both sides. Just make sure that you're not turning this into a race. Nice and smooth, controlled motions, focusing on form. This whole warm-up should take about five to 10 minutes. Next, we're gonna work on a little lead up. If you can't do that one, maybe it's triggering your back a little bit. You can go on your knees and work a T-spine stretch this way. Once again, working on a nice and controlled movement. Next, we're gonna work all the way down the arm with a neck and forearm stretch. Notice my arm is out. My neck is working back and forth in coordination with my hand. My head is pointed away while my fingers are pointed down. Great stretch for the forearm and into the neck. If you're an arm thrower, and you get some soreness in your shoulder blades and neck, this will be great for you to warm up with. Next, I'm gonna show you two ways you can hit the shoulders. Here I have my thumbs up. I'm just alternating thumbs up and thumbs down while my arms are straight, really hitting those shoulders good. Now I'm working on a little scarecrow. Once again, both of these are five to 10 reps. You can do both, you can pick one. I typically do both. Then we're gonna move in some elbow circles. You can do them back and forth, five to 10 reps. Great for forehand players. Then we're gonna move into some wrist circles getting those wrists nice and loose. And we're gonna wrap up our dynamic warm up with just opening and closing our hand with some hand pops. This may seem silly, but if you have hand problems, you know what I'm talking about. That's it for my regular dynamic warm up routine. Now for the one minute lazy warm up, which is one minute of jumping jacks. Not the most ideal warm up, but the best bang for one minute if you're late to the course or something like that. One minute straight of jumping jacks, that should get everything going and loosen up a little bit. Movement prep, let's start with our throwing routine. I always start with a couple of drills today. My brace has been struggling, so I'm gonna start with sea basses, elephant walk drill to work on that. I also wanna focus on my putting today, so I'm doing Kelvin Heidenberg's finger pop drill. You don't have to do these, but I just like to do it. Again, my warm up routine takes maybe 10 or 15 minutes when I do the whole thing. Then I move into throwing. I don't do a whole lot, I do about 10 putters, five or six mid ranges, and five or six drivers just working the power up as I go. Mainly with the putters, I'm just working on staying loose, throwing it straight, and then working some different angles and more power as I go and powering up the last couple drivers just to make sure I feel good before I hit that course. And finally, before I tee off, I do about 10 or 15 putts from different locations just to make sure I can get my release point good, see how that disc is flying out of my hand when I putt today, making sure that spins good, and more importantly, making sure I'm making those putts, because as we know, that's the most important thing. All right, after 10 or 15 minutes, now it's time to sling some D. This is a 365, 70 foot par three. Nice and flat, good release there. Got myself inside the circle. We'll see if I can bang this putt and start my day off with the birdie. Yep, good start from a good warm up. That's it, that's all I've got for today. Hopefully you enjoyed it and you found some exercises that will help you out and hopefully moving to a dynamic warm-up will help you perform better early on in the round. As always, if you keep watching them, I'll keep making them. If there's something you'd like me to break down next, let me know in the comments. I'd also love to hear your favorite warm-up exercise in this video as well. Until next time.